Greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to the Thursday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we unpack uh, verses from God's Word. And this morning we're back in 1 Peter chapter 1, reading from the New Living Translation. We'll be reading verses 5 and 6. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that you are the God who meets us where we are in the midst of life. And you give us words of encouragement and hope to face this day. And so, Lord, as we come to rest, to pause, to listen to you, Lord, would you quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. So reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 5, uh, 5 and 6. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Peter's continuing with this word of encouragement as, as he begins this letter, and he's continuing to acknowledge the truth of the gospel and to encourage us in that truth. There is nothing better for, for each of us who are in Christ than the knowledge that we are saved. The joy of God's salvation offered us through his son, Jesus Christ. There's nothing better than that. Because all of the things of this world will pass away, but our eternal salvation, our relationship with Jesus Christ will never pass away. As he mentioned in the past, in the verses we looked at yesterday, it is that priceless inheritance that is stored up for us in heaven that, where it will not change or decay. Our salvation is secured for us through our relationship with Jesus Christ. When we are born again into that new life that he has prepared for us through accepting his sacrifice on the cross as payment for our sin, surrendering ourselves to him. And so Peter says, and through your faith. You see, it's by faith that we are saved, not by works. Yes, God has given us things to do. Some might call it works. But he's, the things that he gives us to do, he prepared for us from the beginning of time. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows what was and is and is to come. And so the things that, that God has given us to do, he's already prepared for us. And so through your faith, your faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is, is protecting you by his power. See, we can claim that promise because it is the truth of Scripture. God is protecting us. And of course, we pray often that God's hedge of protection will be around us, that he will cover us with his protection and he does that for us but Peter's stating this truth that through your faith God is protecting you by his power see it's not through our own ability it's not through our own wisdom or our own intelligence or our own anything it's not because we're nice people or good people or 
whatever. It's through our faith that God is protecting us. And it's by his power that we are protected until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. See, we are part of God's workmanship. We are part of God's master plan. And though we don't see the beginning from the end as God does, we trust in him. We place our hope and our trust and our faith in him, believing that he knows what he's doing. He knows what's going on. And he's in control. He is sovereign. He has his hand on this, whatever this is. And people have, have commented in the midst of the pandemic, where is God? If God's sovereign, if God's in control, if God knows what's going on, on why doesn't he do something about this pandemic? He is. He is very active in the midst of this pandemic. And as I have said often, he has given each of us free will. But that doesn't mean that he is not in control. He's given us the ability to choose. That's why so often we read in Scripture different leaders say you have a choice choose life or choose death choose God or choose the world choose to go your own way or choose to follow Christ choose to take matters in your own hands or choose to release everything to God by faith, through faith, in faith, trusting in Him. Joshua said in chapter 24, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Acknowledging that in his own strength he could do nothing. In the power of God, he witnessed unthinkable things happening. God working in and through him. And that same promise holds for us today. That God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. We are saved through the shed blood of Jesus Christ when we surrender ourselves to him and his will being done in and through our lives. But the day is surely coming when he will return and gather the church to himself and all the world will see the mighty power of God unleashed. But those who are saved will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so Peter says, So be truly glad. Our salvation should make us the most joyful, glad people in the world. Because no matter what the world throws at us, we know that we are secure in the love of God revealed to us through Jesus Christ. We have an eternal promise, an eternal hope, an eternal glory that is set aside for all who are in Christ. And that, friends, gives us an unspeakable, unthinkable, inexpressible joy in our hearts. And yes, Peter says, there is wonderful joy ahead, to be sure, for all who are in Christ. 
the joy that lies ahead of us is wonderful. Eternity spent with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the reality is, even though you must endure many trials for a little while, and we do endure many trials in our lives, we may endure illness. We may enjoy, we may endure suffering as a result of loss or persecution. There are all manner of trials that we face in this life, but they are temporary. And I know they probably don't feel temporary. As we live our lives day to day, but the reality is, even if we lived to be a hundred years of age, and believe me, I don't wish that upon myself or anybody else, but if that were the case, if we lived to be a hundred years of age, that is like the blink of an eye compared to eternity spent with Jesus. It doesn't seem like it now. But the time will surely come when each, each one of us will have come to the end of our journey in this life and we will enter into God's glorious presence with His Son, Jesus, for all eternity. And this life, however many years we have put in, will seem like the blink of an eye in comparison to eternity with our Savior. And so Peter says, so be, very, be truly glad. <laughs> be truly glad. Because this is not as good as it gets. Trust me. Trust me. Don't trust me. Trust God's word. This is not as good as it gets. There is something far greater, far better, far more joyful, far more peaceful awaiting us when this life is done. And it's not going to be for 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 or 100 years, but for all eternity. Eternity spent in the joy of the Lord. Oh, what a glorious day that will be, friends. As I say, not hoping to check out anytime soon. But the reality is, as good as this life is, there is something far better awaiting each one of us. And so, as Peter says, we can and ought to be truly glad. And so, friends, I don't want to sound like I'm making light of the trials and, and challenges that we are facing today, whether it be the pandemic or the state of our country, the state of our world, the the natural disasters that are happening all around us. Not to mention illness, cancer, and, and, and all manner of physical disabilities. Those are all real. And they are all things that we have to deal with daily. And it can be challenging. It can be difficult. But the good news, friends, is we don't have to do it alone. We don't have to face each day alone. We have a Savior. We have a Redeemer. We have a Protector in Jesus Christ who will help us with whatever it is we are facing. 
each day. Not somebody who, who drops in once a year just to check in on us. But a friend, our Lord and Savior, who, who meets us every single day when we seek him with our whole heart. And he will help us with whatever we are facing to grant us peace, to grant us healing, to give us hope. And we don't know why things happen to people the way they do. We don't know why some people get sick and some people and, and recover and other people get sick and don't. We don't know why some people get COVID and die, even young people, and other people get COVID and survive. But what we do know is that God has laid out each and every day for us. And he is with us. We are not alone. He knows our struggles. He knows our sorrows. And he will meet us where we are. And grant us peace and hope to face this day. And so friends, no matter what you're dealing with today, seek the Lord wholeheartedly and ask him to help you. And he will do it. He will do it. Because he is the God who is protecting you by his power until, you're, until you receive this salvation. His priceless inheritance, which is stored up for you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word which encourages us, which gives us hope as we seek you with our whole heart, as we seek you through faith, trusting in you. Father, we trust you. We trust your word. We cling to your promises. And Lord, it's easy when things are going smoothly and we aren't having to deal with any difficulties in our lives. But Lord, we confess it's more difficult when life gets difficult. And the challenges seem to just pile up one on top of another. But Lord, you are in control. You are sovereign. And you are the one who protects us by your power. And you are the one who guides us and, and leads us in the way we should go. And God, you never promised that Committing our lives to you meant we would no longer suffer or struggle or face difficult times in our lives. You never promised that. But what you did promise us is that you would never abandon or forsake us. You would never bring us to anything that you were not prepared to lead us through. And so, Father, we thank you for leading us through this pandemic season, this pandemic storm that we've been dealing with. We couldn't have gotten to this place without you, without your protection, without your hand, your strong and mighty arm outstretched, leading us. And so we give you all the glory and the praise. 
Jesus, we thank you that you were prepared to weather the storm on our behalf, the storm of sin. Your word says the wages of sin is death. But it doesn't end there. The free gift of salvation is through your shed blood, Jesus, on the cross of Calvary. For all who will receive it. By faith. Through faith. In faith. Trusting in you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for meeting us where we are. And encouraging us to take one step forward, even when it's difficult to do that. Believing that you will direct our steps in the way we should go. Almighty God, we surrender ourselves to you. Father God, we worship and adore you. Lord Jesus, we seek you with our whole heart and desire to serve alongside you. Holy Spirit, we love you. And we pray, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you will make your presence known to us this day in a real and tangible and powerful way. that we may be truly glad because of your presence in our lives and that we may proclaim the truth and testify to your grace poured out freely and abundantly upon us. Almighty God, lead us as we seek you humbly this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope and pray that you've been encouraged by it, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Word. Have a blessed day, friends. Go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.